Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it is Thursday, August 8th. Look at that, I got the date right this time. <laughs> Yay. I'm learning things. Hey, that. uh, and we got World Lion Day coming up on the 10th, which is Saturday. So, uh, I think I'm going to do a World Lion Day image today. That's what we're going to do. So, World Lion Day coming up on the 10th. I'm going to do an image today for you guys while you watch. So, I thought that could be kind of fun. And, uh... Man, we've had a great week, still kind of basking in the glow of the fun that we had this past weekend at our master class. It was so much fun, and Nick and I uh, are definitely going to do some more. We're going to do it again uh, coming up, and uh, we've got some things that we're going to announce uh, in the coming weeks as far as uh, webinars and seminars and conferences and all kinds of cool stuff. All that so, jazz. All that jazz. All that jazz. Stay hydrated, my friend. Kind of stay hydrated and whatnot. Oh. We in the United States, we use a lot of ice. All my European friends, they only use like one or two ice cubes. We are so gluttonous because I, I can't, I love a lot of ice in my drink. We like to keep it ice cold. Yeah. Um, what about so I got to say? Well, we're going we're gonna to do the Lion King Day. But uh, I want to remind you that we've got a whole bunch of things that have come up. I've got my pre-sale for my perspective course happening right now. As a matter of fact, Dustin and I just created three more videos for it yesterday, uh, filling it out even more. We did some videos on um, reflections. Reflections, and shadows, to, and... Shadows, and then how to do repeating intermittent shapes that are equidistant from each other in perspective. So that's going to be kind of cool. So we've really fleshed it out. So we've taken it even further. And so that's in pre-sale right now. So go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and our uh, perspective course, Linear Perspective, is on sale for 40% off. It's never going to be that low again. So when, whenever we put our courses out, the first week or so, we put them out at the lowest price they'll ever be so you can get a nice deal and then, and then we jack them up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jack them no, up. we never jacked them up, but they are going to go up in price. And um, uh, uh, I've got my new Photoshop brushes that are uh, out, and they've been selling like hot like hotcakes. A lot of people have really liked them. The textures, I'm really happy with all the textures. Uh, that's a brand new set. Once again, go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com, and we've got a brand new set of 24 uh, Photoshop brushes, and they work really, really well. I've been using them quite a bit. And um, oh, I'm gonna. Sh I wanted to show another image today. Uh, I did an image. Uh, that was awesome. What's what? that? I was gonna say the uh, the other. Oh, the Patreon. Stuff. Yeah, the Patreon. Yeah, and Patreon the back to too. School. Oh, wow, yeah. back to school sale. How could I forget that? Oh, you know what else I didn't do? What else did you do? I didn't pull up Nick. Oh, what is wrong with you? I know. Sorry, Nick. I forgot Nick. Nick, 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 Birch. Deep thoughts with Nick Birch. There he is. I just found Nick. Birch. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts with Nick Birch. So we, we've got a back to school sale happening right now. And uh, uh, we've got some really great stuff. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the sale is. I think it's, uh, it, I know you, you can save up to. 50% off uh, if you're a student or teacher on our uh, streaming or membership. What is that? He's got a happy happy face, August 8th. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but go check that out at CreatureArtTeacher.com our back to school sale. Uh, it's really, really good. And um, we really want to send all of our savings on to you. Sure. So uh, we've got that. And then also I want to mention my Patreon channel, my Patreon page. Uh, something we've just we've just set up, and uh, we're looking for. Um, to be honest with you, it's another stream of revenue that we're looking for that will help us uh, to continue to create for you guys. And uh, so, if you want to go over and donate and, uh, and help us kind of keep it going, we really appreciate it. And in return, we're giving you. Um, you can get uh, JPEG images that are suitable for downloading and do whatever you want with. We're saying the other uh, the five dollar uh, a month. Fee, you're going to get four images a month, uh, full Photoshop file images. So you're going to get uh, every layer. You're going to be able to break them down and understand how it is that I approach my digital painting. And then also for the $10 a month, 
we're going to get some streaming in there exclusive just for our Patreon members too. So I'll have some special lessons in there and that sort of thing. So back to the back to the back to school because I forgot what uh, what the sale was. It's twenty five percent off of everything for everyone. So uh, twenty five percent off everything on the site, and then it's uh, a fifty percent off for membership for teachers uh, and students. Streaming, uh, streaming, and membership. It's teachers and students. <laughs> no, or maybe it's just membership. Anyway, I'm a little clunky today. You okay? You okay there, buddy? Oh. <laughs> All right there. <laughs> you, was, you okay? I've been working. I got up early this morning because I wanted to do something really good for Lot World Lion Day, and I didn't want to sit for two hours and struggle to come up with an image, which is what I—that's my usual, my usual uh, routine. Uh, when I sit and do these things, I'm just doing whatever comes to my head. But I want World Lion Day to be kind of cool. And um, I came up with like four different images before I settled on the one I want to do. Um, but, uh, oh, I want to pull up real quick. Um, uh, remember our, uh, let's see, where is it, desktop? Desktop. Desktop. Sea Creature. Where was Sea Creature? Oh, it's in Samsung. There it is. So remember our sea creature that we did uh, last on Tuesday. Um, come on, baby. This is it here. This is what we did on last uh, uh, last Tuesday. There it is. And uh, that was a lot of fun, but it didn't feel dynamic enough. So I went away yesterday uh, and came up with one that I thought was going to be that I thought would be a lot more fun. And I wanted it to be more dynamic. And see, this is kind of the process. You kind of come up with the idea of what a creature could be. Then you draw it. And then you kind of start to live with it for a little while. Then you can really pose it and get dynamic with it. And um, and so this was... Uh, where is it? There it is. And there is the one I did last night. Pushing it even further and getting more dynamic. And, and uh, having fun with the composition and everything else. So... Um, what started out as this little creature that we were doing um, at my master class on Sunday has turned into this kind of fun creature uh, that I'm really kind of enjoying drawing and painting. And I've had a lot of people ask me if this is from uh, Nautica. Is it Nautica? Or Sub Subnautica? Subnautica, it's yeah. A, it's a world... It's a, yeah, it's, it's a... a uh, um, it's a free roam underwater survival game. Basically, yeah. it's a sandbox game. Um, and so I looked it up, and it, it, actually, this could kind of fit right into that game. I thought yeah. it was kind of cool. I really, I thought the creatures in there were really neat. I wish I could have worked on it. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. It's, and some of the um, deadlier creatures are in Subnautica are just terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's one in particular that's just as scary as that creature right there. <laughs> I saw it. Because it pulled you right into its mouth. Yep. That's the one. So anyway, so that was that. So this was a lot of fun. Did this yesterday uh, to show you guys how you know these ideas can evolve. And so that was kind of cool. And so today, I want to do World Lion Day. And I'm not sure if you guys will be behind this or not, but I certainly... Uh, I'm doing this. So I want to show you, and what I mean is I came up with a new idea that I want to roll with and I'm not sure if everyone's going to roll with it or not well, I'm, but it's something I want to do. So I'm going to rotate clockwise Ooh, my rotation. canvas. I want to show you kind of the versions that I went through. Come on man, rotate. Here we go. So um, this is the first one. And it was pretty straightforward. I just, I really wanted to do a, a really kind of cool lion portrait, and uh, and get in there. And I still may do this and get in there with you know with some uh, dramatic lighting and, and uh, get the eyes to almost glow. But I wanted something where you could really explore the lion's face. But it really didn't say anything. It was just, it was just a portrait. And then I, I started kind of coming up with stylized versions. I wanted to do something maybe a little more caricatured. Um, but this just felt like a statue. And so then I tried to do something that had a little more character, and this just felt sleazy. <laughs> but then I wanted to do something that made a statement. And um, 
uh, and so I thought of I wanted to do something that had that told a little uh, scratch disks are full. What does that mean? How are the, how come already scratch disks are full? I wonder if my uh, that's weird. Let me save this to. Uh, I gotta save this to. Um, I think my, you uh, need to clear out some, some um, my desktop. Yeah, you need to clear out your desktop. Hold on, everybody. Dustin. Hey, so yeah. I got Dustin with me. Uh, uh. Hi, hi, everybody. So I think I, I just filled up my desktop. I've, I've been saving everything to my desktop for quite a while. Yeah, you, we all have a tendency to do that sometimes. So let me just take everything on my desktop. And I'm going to create a new folder. Desktop. <laughs> until <laughs> until I have stuff. What's the date today? It's eight nine. Or eight eight, right? Nine eight 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 nineteen. No one okay. has a question for me? Go uh, For you? For me. For you? Oh, how's the photography come along? It's come along good. Uh, if we're I'd... talking specifically about the England trip, um, I've been caught up with the perspective course, but I'm about, uh, say, a quarter of the way through the photo so far. The one that's taken the most time is the uh, day of the falconry, because I took a lot of photos that day. Okay, so now I'm going to take everything there. I'm going to put it on my Drobo. I was asking, can it be an albino lion? So everything's copying over. It's 28 gigs. An albino lion? Oh, for World Lion Day? Yeah. No, I don't want to do. Uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do something different. <laughs> I got for something completely different. <laughs> Twitch comment. Cool shirt, Dustin. What are you wearing? Oh, thank you. Oh, it's a uh, old... You know, oh, just sparkly sparkles? Yeah, it's a... Uh, remember uh, the company that Teresa always promoted, UGP? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of their old shirts. Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, I've had this shirt for at least a good... Oh, God, how long has it been? Like, 10 plus years? And it still holds up very well. So right now I'm copying everything over to my Drobo. Sorry, sorry about this, Nick. I, uh, you know me, and I just filled up my computer too much, oh, too much. So it's going to free up about 28 gigs. And that'll be plenty for my drawing today. What kind of question? You got any more questions? Because we copy over. I'm about two thirds of the way there. We're getting there. Uh, some people are already uh, like. Requesting different lion suggestions, like um, a lion uh, sipping tea, like a proper lion si sipping tea. I've done that. Already. Cyborg lion. Well, this is. I want to do something that has a statement. So I'm very much anti trophy hunting. Um, I'm not necessarily anti hunting, but I'm definitely anti trophy hunting, and uh, and lions and a lot of big game in Africa are victim to trophy hunting and uh, trophy hunters that do it both legally and illegally and so I started thinking about that and then I started thinking about some of the world uh, uh, Vietnam era protests where um, uh, protesters were putting flowers into the gun barrels of National Guard and that sort of thing and I thought what if I mixed the two together and I had a lion kind of putting flowers into the barrels of hunters and so that's kind of the idea that I came up with let me just uh, let me make sure real quick I've got my desktop 88 there it is okay so now I can go back to my desktop and I can dump this put that right into the trash trash and empty the trash now Steve Marshall's asking what was the name of the life drawing book by the female artist that you did a forward of in the book uh, uh, the name ah, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the book, but it's uh. Yeah, we were just Yousef. talking about this. Uh, yeah, Yusef. Uh, Yusef. Uh, 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 oh, why did you put me on the spot? Right. Um, right. Samantha Yusef, thank you. Uh, um, I can't remember the name of the book. Um, sorry, you're catching me off guard. 
I've got too many things in my brain. And I was looking for it the other day. But it's Samantha Youssef, and it's figure drawing, so if you look it up, you'll find it. Uh, so now, let me do this image rotation counterclockwise. Aaron and Dustin, have you guys seen the Hotel Transylvania series, and what do you think of it? Oh, I love it. I never seen I never seen the all of them, the entire movies of each ones. I've just seen like bits and pieces. At some point, I do want to watch uh, watch the whole the full versions of them. Yeah. So this is my image. This is the rough the, the rough sketch. This is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm kind of happy with it. I think it says something, and uh, I want to. That's what I want to paint today. So I've got the rough drawing and um, uh, movement and form. Thank you, because it comes from a it comes from a uh, animator's perspective. Uh, Samantha is an animator, and uh, and it's it's really a great book. Um, I just haven't had it out lately, and I put it up on my bookshelf, and now I can't find it. Sorry, Samantha, for the horrible. Uh, promotion if you're listening but uh, Samantha is amazing her book uh, her figure books she's coming out with another one they're really super insightful and really come from a place of uh, well it's a place of knowledge because not only is she an animator but she's also a dancer and so that understanding of movement and form really comes from a strong place with her and uh, she explains it all really really well so I really recommend it it's uh, Movement and Form, and it's uh, uh, syllabus.com. syllabus.com. So here we go. This is uh, the image I'm going to do today. And so I'm going to start, I'm going to strip this back just a little, whoops, there we go. There. So I'm going to strip this back a little bit. And... Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of this for now and I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of my that right there and then I'm going to get rid of the text so now I've gotten it down to its rough drawing and uh, I'm going to knock that under drawing back even more but I'm going to keep that upper drawing the top drawing oh no I'll probably knock that back just a touch YouTube question. After I go through the fundamentals, what other animation exercises should I do? <clears throat> well, once you get through the fundamentals, it's time to get into acting. So start getting into dialogue and how to get a character to act. Actually, try to get, get into the, uh, a character pantomiming. Uh, look at a, bu a lot of Buster Keaton and that sort of thing. Um, uh, and, uh, movies. and really, you Look at silent film and really see what they did. And look at a lot of the the old nine old men, and there's some really great. Um, he's not too jazzed on the. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting I'm getting distracted. But get into uh, pantomime. That's your next thing. And then Nick says, "I love the image. Not too jazzed on the font. We'll have to come up with something else." I, I completely agree. It was just the font that was in my my text. But uh, but that's def This is definitely the image. So I'm going to go with this. So thank you, Nick. Nick 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 Birch. So I'm going to go with the color. Oh, it's a little dark. I'm going to go with this color on our lion. Uh, I'm going to create a layer underneath the drawing layers. Will you be willing to do a layout course? I know just the guy. Yes. We've got several guys already lined up for the layout course that we're going to use. Yes, we are. So I'm just laying in very quickly. So he's saying um, flag of different countries instead of the flowers. No. Flowers are a universal symbol for peace and love. So I'm just going to do that. If I'm putting flags in, I'm not sure what putting flags into the guns means. Other than they're guns from different countries. But I want him to say, hey, you don't have to shoot me. Peace and love, baby. Hey, baby. Peace and love, baby. All right. 
I'm looking to buy a Wacom uh, Cintiq 16. Uh, should I get the Wacom Remote Control too? Uh, the Wacom Remote Control, I don't know. I've never used it. So that shows you, uh, maybe you don't need it. I've never used the Wacom Remote Control. Nick, what's the Wacom Remote Control? Do you know what it is? I don't. Nick says, uh, as last year, we'll be selling a lim oh, uh, we'll be selling a limited uh, edition and signed and numbered version of this. It will be available for order on August 10th at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Yeah, so I'm going to be finishing this up, and um, we're going to be selling uh, limited edition prints of this, and the money goes towards lion conservation. So I'm just laying in very much a base, uh, base layer. Hey, mouth breather, I can hear you breathing now, too. <laughs> so I came into the office... Came in the office. I was I was I was choking down a sandwich really fast before we went on because I was really hungry and I didn't want to go for three hours without eating. I mean, yeah. come on, I might starve. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> and I came in and Dustin couldn't find a file, and so I come walking in to help him out, and I'm chewing this sandwich, and it's just the worst. <laughs> like you could hear me getting fatter. It was just. And <laughs> and it's not even a joke this time. It's yeah. for real. <laughs> And so I ended up mimicking him. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. Alright, so the whole idea is I just want to get <clears throat> the silhouette painted in here because then I can lock the lock the layer and uh Oh, Nick says it's the hotkey remote. Uh, if that's if that's what it is, if it's the hotkey remote, then you might want to get it. I just I haven't found the need for it because I use my laptop, but I'm always reaching over here on my laptop. So, yeah. it could come in handy. You never know. Handy, handy. It could come in handy. It could come in handy. It's baby yawn, man. It could come in handy. So what I've done is I've locked this layer now. And I'm actually, I'm just using traditional, I, I, I decided to change it up the other night just to, because I'm just, just getting bored. And uh, I went back to just some of the old traditional uh, brushes that comes with YouTube. And they're kind of fun. So I'm, I'm going back and forth between my brushes and some of just YouTube standard brushes. Do you use the alpha lock after laying the basic layer? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. If alpha lock, if you mean by locking the layer so I can't paint outside the layer, if that's what you mean, then yes, that's what I'm doing. Alpha dog. Uh, and also, do you have one layer for each individual local color, or is it all in the same layer? Uh, I do, uh, I, I do uh, a layer for local color. Then I do a layer for shadows and a layer for highlights and then a layer for deeper shadows and, and then a layer for brighter highlights and so on and so on and so on. It just keeps going and going and going. Uh, YouTube question. After I go through the fundamental... Oh, that's a YouTube question. What is your opinion on people saying that trophy hunting actually helps animal conservation? Well, <laughs> theoretically, if it's bringing in... I think it's bullshit. So, sorry for... Um, for, for lack of a better way of putting it because over time those animals being alive with a proper tourism industry can bring in a lot more money uh, through tourism than they can by one hunter coming through and spending a hundred thousand dollars to kill it and just from an ethics standpoint I think it's bullshit and I hate it and uh, and that's how I feel about it um, I understand hunting for sustenance and for survival and that's a different argument and a different story. When it comes time, uh, when you're talking about, you know, fat ass dentists from the United States living in Texas or Europe or wherever, going out and getting their rocks off so they can kill a lion from 
you know, 30 yards with a high-powered ch- a rifle, you know, um, I think they, I think it's uh, something else should be, we, that's a different discussion. That's why I always say, don't shoot with a gun, shoot with a camera. <laughs> yeah, because I do think that, you know, if you, you know, spend more time on putting together proper tourism, and you'll, you'll be, those animals will be a lot more valuable alive, and you'll be helping out. Arr, I knocked this back. You'll be helping out conservation in that way. What kind of walking pad do you recommend for beginners with a low budget? Uh, I think the uh, I'm not sure how low your budget is, but I'm lo- you know looking at the if you're looking at the um, the the 16 inch, I think it's really awesome. If you're if you can't if you still can't afford a pen display, then any of their Intuos products are really good as a as a as a beginning. I think it's beginning like Wacom Cintiq uh, 16 is a is a good one. Yeah. But don't quite recall the price on it. It's around uh, uh, 600 bucks, 500, 500 bucks. Oh yeah. Between that's, five and 600, something like that. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's the one that I use when I go on the road. Right. How many lion cubs have you drawn? Seven. Seven? Mm-hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> How many lion cubs? Lion cubs, yes. Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, if you count Nala, about 100,000. Because I had to draw her over and over again. Do you own a 59 uh, Les Paul? And what's your prized guitar? No, I do not own a 59 Les Paul. If I did, I'd be really happy. Um, my most pr- I've got a National Resonator that I really love that I got from my friend Ronnie Williford. That's one of my favorite guitars. And I've also, my current guitar, I just bought this little $600 uh, Taylor. Um, it's a just a just a tiny little guitar, but I man, it, it sounds great. I love it. So I've been playing that quite a bit. Nick asked, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is it Botswana a model of a country where they have eliminated trophy hunting entirely and are doing better financially through tourism than ever before? That I don't know, and I'd love to be able to answer that. I don't know, Nick. We should find out. Nick and I are headed off to Kenya in uh, October, and uh, these are all issues that we're going to try to tackle with some of the folks there. I want to talk to a lot of them, uh, the, the friends that we have over there. My friend Manny, I, Manny's probably listening today. I'm sure, Manny, you have an opinion on this kind of stuff. Um, I think Manny and I meet somewhere in the middle on this. Really looking forward to this trip in October. It's going to be great. Dustin, ever thought of doing a director's commentary on any of your dad's videos? Are you talking about like the courses that we've worked on here? Or are you talking about the stuff that? I think he's talking about the dad's courses. animated, huh? The courses. Probably the courses. It'll be a very very slow talk. <laughs> <laughs> We're not slow, but very quick. Like, yeah, I edited this. Well, okay, Nick, and, Nick and I have been talking. You know, Bob and I, we never did do a director's commentary 
on Brother Bear. They wanted us to, but we just pushed back because I neither one of us felt like anybody wanted to hear us talk about the movie. We just didn't think it was going to be that interesting. Yeah, so you brought in uh, Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis, and they acted as the yeah. Mooses. So uh, you're taking over my story. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we brought in Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas. Uh, just to do it as a comedy th thing and let them kind of talk about the movie and, and uh, um, you know, their experiences making it, but doing it as a comedy thing. And uh, But since then, Nick and I have been talking. Uh, unfortunately, well, you know, Bob, my co-director on Brother Bear, he passed away uh, four years ago, three years ago. And... Uh, and I'd like to do something in honor of him. You know, he was one of my best friends. He was the first guy I met when I started at Disney. He was like a brother to me. He really, you know, he was always there. You know, he was older than me and uh, always the voice of reason when it came time for debate with Chuck and I. <laughs> and uh, he was such a great guy. And I'd love to do something. Uh, and I think the commentary could be kind of fun. I'd like to get uh, Chuck Williams in. And uh, I don't know if Chuck is listening to this, but we could get Chuck Williams in and we could do something on YouTube and just, you know, we could record it and you guys could sync it. And, you know, can, you could watch it on YouTube, watch the movie or, or whatever. And uh, you could watch us on YouTube and then watch the movie and everything would be synced up. And uh, we just think that could be a lot of fun. And I'd like to do it for, <coughs> for Bob. That would be cool. It would be cool. Aaron, is it possible to get you as a teacher for a longer run and get an education, for example, animation through you? No. Uh, only because of our, the way our schedule works and the, the way my business model is working, I'm not teaching privately. I'm only teaching through my courses or through our uh, our conferences, our master classes, that sort of thing. Um, we will be doing more. Um, we might have opportunities down the road with some one-on-one -on -one type stuff. But as it stands right now, we're just we don't just we just don't have the time to to do that. And so we're more focused on um, uh, mass, you know, getting out to the masses. So Nick says, he looked it up. Botswana did ban all trophy hunting for five years, but they reversed that in a limited way for elephants this year because of the local elephant conflict and politics. Yeah. Politics you can't get away from. No. The elephants, if they don't have enough, uh, you know, they get into conflict with a lot of the, the farmers. It's tough. It sucks. Hey guys, I just walked through the art of Aaron, of the art of animation resort lobby in Orlando. Does Aaron have any concept art in that room? P.S. I'm watching from the in the lobby waiting for my room to be ready oh um i don't know if i do or not i might i think i think i do but i can't remember for sure just keep your eyes peeled yeah there might be something in there can't remember for sure eh? yeah it is a good question Gary. if you could choose one film to have worked on which you weren't involved with which film would you choose and why yeah I get a lot of that I get that question all the time um, as far as animation goes um, you know for recent stuff I really wish I could have worked on um, Zootopia I love that movie and I really like Byron Howard Byron Howard and I used to work together at Disney Byron is the director of Zootopia and I'd love to work with him again um, but uh, there's a lot of films I would love to have worked on. Uh, Iron Giant's another one. Man, I wish I could have worked on that. And that was the one I keep forgetting when people ask me my favorite Disney, my favorite animated movies. Iron Giant's right up there. I always forget to to mention it. Mm. 
Uh, Twitch question. Do you have a tutorial on how you shade or strafe with a pencil? I hope I'm asking the right the question correctly. Some people call it the intersection where you shade it uh, uh, one way and then you shade it the other way. Yeah, I mean, I, I that's basically how I do my shading when I'm working traditionally. But no, I don't have a course on that. So that's that's something we can look into for sure. So right now what I'm trying to do is I'm still working on local... Oh man, excuse me. I yeah. choked those sandwiches down pretty fast, so they're coming yes, back up. <laughs> they're coming back up. Um, so right now I'm focusing, uh, just trying to get some variance uh, in the color, uh, the local color that I'm, that I'm laying down. And so I want to get into the body a little bit now. How do you keep the edges clean when you color? When I hide the uh, when I hide the sketch layer. All the imperfections show. Is oh, it yeah. in the brush? Mine, mine, you know, you can see right there. I've got it locked right now too, so um, if nothing will go outside that silhouette. Okay, so yeah, look there. It's all just as rough. It's all rough. It's all rough. Do, 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 do. Can we get a live stream where you critique or our animation demo reels? Um, no, probably not. Those are going to be ones that um, um, critiquing and that sort of thing. It takes a, a lot of my time. That's probably going to be stuff that we're going to be saving for down the road for private sessions. Um, we can't do it as a live stream. And it's something that really takes some, a, a little bit of time and effort on my part as far as getting the reels, going through them, you know, coming up with a critique, all of that. Because I, I always want to make sure that I'm giving a, a good critique for whoever sends something in. And I want it to be well thought out. What are the dimensions of this image? It's 18 by 24, or in this case, it's 24 by 18. And it's... Uh, 300 DPI. I'm getting to a point where I can financially start to afford to travel for my art. Uh, what places would you recommend to start uh, photographing animals and doing um, plain art painting? Africa. 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 And if you're if you're here in the states, you know anywhere, you know Yellowstone, Teton, um, you know any anything like that. There's places everywhere. Just gotta really look them up. Derby on YouTube says Iron Giant is one of the very few animated movies I would really enjoy a live action remake of. Not as a movie. Uh, not as a movie original had that perfectly done but as a season long show oh that's a cool idea that's a really cool idea I like that Dustin did you decide which camera you you want yet seeing about the a7r the a7r4 does sound tempting with all of its ergonomics and everything um, it's ergonomics it's ergonomics um, and also the way they've added the new, the way they've updated everything. But I'm thinking of um, going with the A7 III and start from there. Then when they release the A7 IV, then I might get that next. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm going with the A7 III next. Um, did you also have time to animate it all uh, on Brother Bear? Uh, did you do some character design? Like, please tell us more stories about how you worked on that movie. Yes, I did. I did initial character design just to get it off the ground, and then when the animators came on, they redesigned everything and, and got it really strong. Um, I did have time to animate. Um, you know, once we got the movie really up and running, I wasn't having to hit every department anymore because, you know, um, the story department was starting to roll off, and um, I had a little bit more free time on my hands. So. Uh, I was then able to go over and um, 
grab some footage and animate it. So in the section where Kenai first wakes up as a bear, Tanana comes and wakes him up. I animated Tanana, and then I animated Kenai after that. Um, not when he's running around as a bear, but after she leaves. And he sees that the chipmunks are talking and all that. I animated Kenai and all that stuff. Are lions that have a black mane a different species? No, they're just older. Lions that have a black mane tend to be more, uh, they're, they're older. And, uh, they're in their prime, basically. I'm in my prime. Yeah, so the black maned lions, they tend to be, uh, prized for trophy hunting because they're, they, uh, they're, you know, they're more adult. Not more adult, but more, uh, mature. Mature, yeah, thank you. So the darker the hair is, the older they are. Yes, yes. Pretty much, that's pretty much it. Which is not really the direction that they went for in the original Lion King, because in the in the 2D animated Lion King, Scar had like pure black hair while yeah. uh, Mufasa had brown. Yeah, I just think they were making it, trying to make him look more sinister by making him darker. I don't know. I think, you know, he, I think that was their their reasoning, whether or not that's what happened. If you feel like he looks more sinister or not, I don't know. Do you think they did um, better with Scar's design in, um, in this new one? I, I like Scar's design okay in the new one. Um, he felt like a younger lion than, than Mufasa. Let's get these gun barrels, shall we? I hear people. Ah, here, folks. It's just Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. All right. So we're getting we are getting the uh, the base down, and pretty soon I'm going to be able to start laying in shadow and highlights, and that sort of thing. I'm trying to keep this somewhat loose. And clear. Aaron, didn't you do some illustrations for the for a new Lion King book, or is that still a thing? I, I actually backed out of the job because they rewrote the Lion King book to be more of a like a kid's first reader and it was like a little uh, for five four or five year olds for uh, and then the book became like a um, a little Timon and Simba Timon and Pumbaa and Simba adventure in the forest rather than the retelling of the story in book form and so which it wasn't really which I think is fine it just wasn't my it's not my forte because my, my drawing style is more dramatic and um, uh, and you know a lot more chunky and whoops. So that being said, I, uh, I talked to the editor and we both agreed and I, uh, I backed out of the project. It was disappointing too because I was really excited about doing that. I was really excited about it. But the upside was it, it enabled me to go on my uh, last year, my vacation up to Vermont, which was awesome. Whew. Keep getting a little heartbeat skips. <laughs> You're right. 
ja. <clears throat> In your experiences as a Disney animator, what are some aspects that surprised you about the career? Any revelations you weren't expecting? Um, no, because it was everything was new about it to begin with, so I didn't know what to expect to begin with. I was never an animator, so um, I was never trained, you know, I never went to school for animation, so everything that I did, um, you know, everything was new to me. So, uh, yeah, so that, I don't know what to say, I mean, it was, everything, everything was a new experience, so it, it was, it was always defining itself as I, as I went. And this is a mess over here. I gotta fix this. Don't like this. I'm gonna do this instead. Right there. And I'm gonna go up to this drawing and erase that back. Go to this drawing and erase that back. That's much better. There we go. There she be. There. I wasn't liking that. The uh, get rid of some of that negative space there too. Brian asks, "Hey, Aaron, nothing can take the place of good art and hard work and determination for getting discovered. But how much credit do you place on luck?" Example, the right place, person, time. Well, there is an element of that. You know, I, um, for me, I just happened to get into the animation industry at the right time. You know, I got into the animation industry in the mid 80s, the mid, uh, late 80s, when it was uh, just resurging again. And uh, so if I hadn't have done that, you know, who knows where I would have ended up. I probably would have ended up at Hallmark Cards because that was. That was the other company that was interested in, in uh, that I was interested in interviewing with. So who knows? Or I may have ended up, you know, my wife at the time, she had gotten an, an internship with um, uh, Telecommunications Magazine in Chicago, and she had an art direction offer that she turned down because I had a Disney offer, and she decided to stay with me with Disney and all that. But I could have very well gone with her up to Chicago, and I could be living in Chicago right now. So it's really hard to say in hindsight where one would be one way or the other, because it's um, yeah, you just never know. Um, but there is hard work. You, you know, I think we make our own luck, and so yeah, sure, there's a lot of being at the right place at the right time. But if you don't have the abilities and the skill set when you're in the right place at the right time, then it doesn't mean anything anyway. So it really is a combination of the two. So I'm just cleaning up some of this underdrawing a little bit before I get into before I get into the shadows and highlights and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. YouTube comment: When I was little, I watched the uh, Beauty and the Beast extras and saw some dude animating and thought, one day I'll draw. I found your channel a few years ago and realized you were the dude. <laughs> <laughs> the dude abides. Yes, that was probably me. That's pretty funny. I've had that. I've had people tell me that several times. <laughs> that makes me happy. I love that. I like that story. Alright, I'm going to start shading. 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 Did I ever ask about the uh, Mulan villain? Huh? Did I ask about the Mulan villain? Sean Yu? No. Or, uh... Um, can you share anything about the deleted villain you were working on for Mulan before he got cut, and what that storyline would have been like? Well, that storyline, he was the traitor. So that was uh, um, Bao Gung. He was the traitor, and, and the, the, the problem what, with it was is that there was just too many characters, and so they needed to start simplifying. And so the Shan Yu was, uh, he was, he was kind of the hired gun by Bao Gung. Yeah, he Bao Gung was bringing the Shan Yu in to take over China. 
they realized, well, why don't we just make the Shen Yu the bad guy? And so that's what they did. And uh, otherwise, yeah, Bao Gong was just kind of this guy that was manipulating everything. And uh, it, there wasn't a lot, there wasn't a lot to it. So I totally agreed with the changes that they made. It was, it was the right thing to do, for sure. Sarah asked, do you know Richard Vanderwind? I'm asking, uh, I'm studying his work in my visual development class, and he contributed early designs for Beauty and the Beast. I know of him. I never met him. He was in California at the time. Um, he wasn't in Florida. And I was, I was in Florida for 15 years, especially during Beauty and the Beast. Will you let your hair grow long and fabulous again? <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm done with long hair. I had it for 25 years. Yeah, I never say never. I might grow it again, but I had it for 25 years and it was great. But living in Florida, it just drives me crazy in the summertime. It's hot and muggy, and I'm just I'm too. I'm, I love the feel of this long hair now, or short hair now. No, never gonna grow it out again. Uh, YouTube question: Do you believe that learning? To, uh, do you believe that learning to draw a professional at age 25 is too late? No. <laughs> no. You're a kid. You're still a kid at 25. Stop it. Uh, was it Baxter who did Zazu in Lion King? No, no. That uh, Zazu was done by um, uh, uh, Alan Woodbury. Uh, Barry, uh, um, Baxter did uh, Rafiki. Ah. Uh. Ellen Woodbury did Zazu. Ellen Woodbury is now a sculptor in, in Loveland, Colorado. I think that I think that's where she's living. I know she just did a show out there. So I'm really just going in and trying to define some of these darker, some of these shadow areas. Get a little darker with it. Um. YouTube comment, make the lion holding a Pepsi, LOL. <laughs> All right, Nick, what's the point of even posting that? <laughs> uh, did you ever visit Germany? And if not, any travel plans for the future? Yeah, we have travel plans for the future. I've been to Germany. Not really, I haven't been to Germany. I've been kind of very close to Germany. But no, I haven't been to Germany. I mean, literally close enough. I was on one side of the lake or... I can't remember where it was. It was uh, not Geneva. Where the heck was it? Zurich. I was in Zurich. I was very close to Germany when I was in Zurich. And, uh, um, but um, we are going to be traveling probably not until next year at this point. Um, and we don't know where we're going to go yet. We're, I know we have some plans for South Africa um, in the beginning of the year. Um, and beyond that, I'm not sure. We just don't have the plans yet. And we're trying very hard to cut back on our travel. Uh, unfortunately, it's just, it eats up a lot of, of our funding. And uh, so the traveling we do do, we've got to really make it count. So we're going to be really kind of reevaluating our travel itineraries and, and our habits and that sort of thing in the coming year. Uh, Timinator on YouTube says, thanks for keeping animation alive. I'm learning how. That's great. That makes me happy. I love hearing stuff like that. Nick says it's a famous commercial. Oh, uh, what's a famous commercial? What was I talking about? Uh, I, I can't remember what I was talking about. I'm... I was looking at the comments. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, the Pepsi. Oh, I got you. Oh. Who do you think is a better animator, you or your brother? Oh, I think I, from a natural, just like natural animating ability, and uh, I think tra uh, Travis is. Yeah, in terms of uh, skill and ease of uh, being observer of the movement. Yeah, I don't know. I I think I really think Travis is probably the better animator. I, um, I think we're both good, 
I think Travis is more creative in his choices. Sometimes I get caught up in, you know, kind of cliched choices, I think. Although I try not to. But I think Travis is really, really great animator. Uh, what animation of uh, Baxter do you like best? Um, his, the stuff he did for, um, what was the princess movie where she comes to life and re like go to live action? He goes to live action just recently, um, like ten years ago. Oh, Enchanted. Enchanted. He did all the stuff with the with the with the uh, Prince Charming and the horse. Oh yeah. And all of that, and it was it's unbelievable. It's un effing believable. Uh, Twitch question. Are you familiar with the animated Jungle Book stories by Chuck Jones? I fell in love with Ricky Tiki Tavi when I first saw it as a kid and still love watching it today. Yes. And, uh, I want to, I want to do Ricky Tiki Tavi. I love that story. I loved it. And I, I love Chuck Jones' uh, approach to it. I love when you'd see the snake and you get all... <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it, Dustin? Yeah. You know the part I'm talking about? Uh, he'd get up, he'd, he'd all, he'd, it's, it's, uh, he'd, all the hair on his back would go up and he'd start bouncing around and go after the snake. I can't remember that, actually. I can't remember that. I, 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 I can't remember that. Uh, of the nine old men, which, uh, which of them influenced you the most? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that any one influenced me the most because I, I, uh, I liked all of them, and uh, I was always a big fan of Milt Call's draftsmanship. Um, but I love those choices and and Mark Davis and his approach to animals, and they all had their own skill set. With that's really influenced a lot of us in different ways but I mean the, the, the one animator that, that influenced me the most of everybody was Glenn Keane and I always consider him kind of the tenth old man even though he wasn't there at the time he's part of the, the new generation and uh, Glenn really was the big influence for me as an animator as an up and coming animator and he was my he was my mentor. Did you ever consider anyone other than Phil Collins for the music for Brother Bear? Yeah, I was really interested in Peter Gabriel, ironically enough, because they're in Genesis together. Hmm. Uh, but Phil had just won the Oscar on Tarzan, and don't get me wrong, I, it's not that I didn't want Phil. It's just my first, my initial my initial uh, choice was Peter Gabriel because of, of his you know his the tribal music he can do. Uh, Twitch comment. I just wanted to say thank you for your advices you gave me a few months ago on being a father and an animator at the same time. I decided to focus more on my little boy. And it's the best decision so far. Of course it is. <laughs> it's hard to find time to work, but the little time I have to animate is super productive. That's great. And you won't regret not being there for your boy. One of my biggest regrets, although he doesn't remember it, was missing my son's first birthday. I'll always regret it for the rest of my life. And so you don't want to have those kind of regrets. No regrets. Have you ever drawn Aslan from, uh, Aslan the Lion character from uh, Chronicles of Narnia? Uh, do you like that character? Wish you would do your version of, uh, of Aslan one day. Uh, sure, I like him okay. Uh, no, I've never drawn him. Just throwing in shading, rounding out the character. Very early stages still. Getting this guy all rendered out. Nick says, we should get an oversized high chair and reenact Dustin's first birthday. <laughs> <laughs> 
That would be awesome. <laughs> you do that for me, Dustin. Would you like to be part of a super soft birthday party? <laughs> That's a funny term. <laughs> what? A super soft. Oh, super soft, yeah. It's like a like a princess birthday party, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. The super soft birthday party. Where everything's like pink and glittery and they dress Cupcakes. dress up a pony as a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Question. How would you go about animating skin moving over bones such as on the rib cage if that's even a thing in animation or is it mostly CGI? We wouldn't do it in two D. That's not something we would do unless Unless it's specifically, you know, calling for it, which I can't ever imagine a sequence, a scene where it would call for that. It's mostly CGI. But you need to have, you need to have something on the skin that's telling you that it's, if the skin's too smooth, you're not going to see it moving over the rib cage. So you need texture on the skin so you can see that texture rolling over the rib cage. That's the biggest thing. Or markings on the skin or something. Or something. Or something like that. There. So I'm just getting... I'm actually enjoying using this. It's just a regular hard round brush. Actually get some nice effects with it. Uh, do you shade on top of your original line art? Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. Yep, I'm putting the shading right on top of the original line art. Looking forward to beta testing animation paper. Would I be correct in think, thinking you have been alpha testing it? Um, I, <laughs> I've been asked to, and I haven't been able to. And um, uh, I really want to do it. Um, I just haven't been able to. I've, I'm so I'm pulled in so many different directions from people asking me to try this or try that or whatever. And we're always you know working on our whether it's our master class or whatever it might be. We vote. We're getting pulled in a lot of different directions. So I only have a certain amount of hours in the day that I can do stuff, and, uh, and I just haven't had a chance to do it to try it. Uh, what is this uh, uh, animation paper thing? It's new, so it's like it's like uh, it's meant to be a competitor with TV Paint and uh, Toon Boom. Gotcha. What is this animation paper you speak of? What is this animation paper you speak of? It's um, it's paper that <laughs> is made for animation and uh, has holes in the bottom, so you can link them all together. You can flip them. <laughs> so I'd like to see Doctor Doolittle animated. Talk about lots of animals. Yeah, we would like to see that too. Um, there's, I know there's a couple studios out there that have talked about it. Just got to wait and see what happens. Because that is definitely one I'd like to make. For his first birthday party, does someone need to bleach his beard white or shave it off for his B day? <laughs> And I still don't know what I want to do for my for my upcoming birthday. Uh, Dan on YouTube asked, "Do you think big cats in the wild do the same weird stuff that house cats do, like take off running at full speed in a frenzy for no reason?" <laughs> <laughs> I bet they do. YouTube question: How long did it take you to think of the brother bear story? Well, we didn't think of it all at once. It actually evolved. The Brother Bear story started out as a story called Shadow Bear, and it was really kind of uh, inspired by the song Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin. It was, about, it was a story about a father, a Native American father, who doesn't spend enough time with his son, and his son becomes a jerk. <laughs> and, it's, and, uh, and it's the story of how... Uh, Kenai, the son, kind of deals with it. And um, 
we called it Shadow Bear. It was a really cool little story. But um, but as we as the story developed, um, it became it morphed and changed and evolved, and um, that's the best way that I can I can explain how the whole story pro- process 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 I'm turning Canadian how this whole story process works. It really does kind of morph and and it's not linear either, and uh, and it just changes uh, over time as you develop it. Did Aaron ever use Animo? Animo? A N I M O? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I thought you would know. Nick, Nick, Nick. Nick says there are currently they are currently doing another live action version, so I feel like that's going to kill the mental real estate for a bit. Oh, you must be talking about uh, Doctor Doolittle. Good use of the word mental real estate, Nick. Nice. Very intelligent. So I'm going in uh, with my overlay layer and just adding texture and highlights. Do lines knock things off the table? (laughs) Just to be jerks. Have you seen the latest Grinch movie? What did you think of it? I haven't seen it. It's funny you mentioned that because I was clicking through the stations, the TV stations last night at about 11.30, wondering, not quite ready to go to bed, and Grinch was on. And I was like, mm, nah, and I didn't watch it. Yeah, I, I watched it uh, last week. It's on Netflix, and uh, yeah. it's all right. I mean, it's they did mix up quite a lot of the original story it's like it's a whole other way of interpreting the story but it was alright it wasn't fantastic but it had it's moments wow talk about a lukewarm reception yeah I know right YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, I wonder if there will be any African workshops, like a 10-day Serengeti safari drawing the wildlife there, something like the one you did at the castle. You know what? I would love to do something with that, you guys. I just don't know that we could ever make it cost-effective to where I just, I mean, just me as an artist going, usually a, a 10-day a ten day safari is usually in the five to $6,000 range, let alone me trying to teach on teach you guys on top of it. It would be really, really cost prohibitive. Just saying. I don't like your questions. Find an oldie. Um, did I ever ask you about? Um, which of the nine nine old men inspired you? Yep. Yep. You don't remember? You don't remember that from ten minutes ago? No, I have short term memory loss. Oh, all right. telling me to pinch you for some reason. To pinch me? <laughs> pinch you. I don't oh, to wake why. me up? Oh, yeah. Maybe it's just to wake me up. I'm I'm, uh, I'm just focusing on the drawing here, baby. Remember the one time um, to keep you awake, I'd, I would smack, smack your back. Smack me in the back, yeah. <laughs> that kept you awake for a good while. It did. It really, it really did. Uh, stay hydrated. Mm. All right. Actually, I'm liking this one. It's coming out kind of fun. I got to get in here and uh, I've got to uh, do some. Well, I'll do the shading on the gun. Well, I'll do it now. What the heck? Got to get back to my uh, my shadow layer. 
hit some of these shadows on the flowers. On the flowers, eh? Any flowers, eh? Uh, do you enjoy watching movies you made as an animator, or do you wish you could have done better? On a lot of them, I wish I could have done better. I enjoy some of them, but most of them I don't, and I don't watch them. The 9-11 attacks had a had an effect on the direction of Brother Bear's story, right? Yes. Uh, and how different people became afraid of each other and saw themselves as enemies. Exactly. That was a big influence, and that's where uh, I drew a lot of... Um, the 9-11 attacks, I drew a lot of inspiration. I shouldn't say inspiration, but I drew a lot of what was happening in the world, especially in the United States, uh, after 9-11, where anybody that had... Uh, that was part of a, you know, Islam and that sort of thing are being persecuted here in the states, just because of their religion, and uh, and it really struck me in a way that caused me to think about Brother Bear in the same light, and um, whereas Kenai hates all bears just because they're bears, you know, and it really, um, it's not a direct, absolute direct parallel, but it was a pretty close parallel. And it really helped me kind of define what the movie was about, which is basically, you know, you can't judge anybody until you walk a mile in their shoes and see that they're just like you. And uh, and that's really what Brother Bear became about. Real important hmm. question. Yeah? Uh, have you saved yet? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I got the spinning world of death. Uh -oh. Spinning world, uh, wheel of death. That's not nice going on. Oh, there we go. Uh, Jessica asks, any tips on walk cycles? I'm having trouble with my character walking toward the camera at an angle. He increases in size and exits. Uh, my book shows walk cycles left to right or toward the camera. Or toward, oh, you don't get them from the angle. I see what you're saying. Oh, someone here. Someone else is home. Who that? It's it's your lovely lady. Hey, lovely lady is home. And Heather, I'm talking about yeah. And Heather. <laughs> um, as far as walk cycles go, and and you know, a lot of people, the biggest problem that I see with walk cycles when you have them, especially coming uh, at an angle toward camera, um, is they tend to people tend to animate them. Uh, increasing in size too fast. Take your time with it. Uh, sometimes you might have to grid out the pattern too as far as where they're going to be. Um, that's Without have, actually sitting down and doing it and seeing what you're doing, that's the best advice I can give to you. Is just really take your time with that and make sure that the character's not growing too fast. Now, who did the art of the uh, Brother Bear poster behind you? Uh, that was done by the marketing department. To be honest with you, I don't know who did it. Our marketing department at Disney did that. Uh, Chelsea Henry asks, Hey Aaron, uh, just wondering if you received my email. Uh, I thought I sent it to the wrong address at first. Uh, so sorry if it showed up twice in your inbox. Chelsea Henry, I'm sorry, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look. I get a lot of emails, so I have to, I can't remember, I'll have to go back and look. Sorry, if I'm, yeah, I'm sorry about that, I just, um, I can't remember. What's your favorite color? Teal. Teal. Uh, it's Manny. How many big cat skulls do you have? <laughs> Manny's asking? Manny's asking. <laughs> um, I've only got... Technically, technically zero, because uh, the what the the actual big cats I have are reproductions. So the only cat skulls I have are a cougar and a bobcat, mm -hmm. which aren't technically cougars. Technically, aren't big cats, right? If I remember right, they are. No, oh. they're the biggest of the small cats. Or at least that's what I've been told. And you animated some of the bears in Brother Bear, right? Uh, no, I just did Kenai. Because oh, someone was asking uh, what bears in Brother Bear did you animate? 
So yeah, no, Kenai. Kenai. Kenai, Kenai is a bear. Or Kenai is a human. Kenai is a bear. Gotcha. All right, time to get a background in here. Time to get a background in here. Hey, Manny. Hey, Manny. All right, let's see here. Uh, Phil. Phil. A Phil? A Phil? All right, let's add some texture. I want this one. It's going to vary up that background color a little bit. A little bit. YouTube question. I decided to go to Lightbox Expo this year primarily because you will be there. I'm really excited. Oh boy. I hope I don't let you down. <laughs> I will be there for sure. I'm giving a whole bunch of lectures. He's going to meet you in person like, you're not Aaron. You're not <laughs> what I expected. <laughs> Manny, Manny officially said, hey, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Manny. Hey, Aaron. Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. Uh, who supervised uh, Bear Kenai? Bear Kenai was Byron Howard. Byron Howard also directed uh, Zootopia. And then Human Kenai was directed by Jim Jackson, the 11th man to ever walk on the moon. The 11th man to ever walk on the moon. Hey Aaron, could you tell us about Walt Disney? What was he like? <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, you your mother with that <laughs> Alright, I don't know if that was a joke, but if it wasn't a joke, for the umpteenth time, I was born in 1968. Walt died in 1966. I never met Walt. You know <laughs> never that question's going to keep coming. Never even came close to meeting Walt. You know that question's going to keep coming. So, Nick, anytime somebody <laughs> asks that question, just... Rewrite it as Roy. <laughs> Alright, hey Aaron, do you think while ma remaking Lion King, Disney has failed because characters expressing emotion in 2D was much better than the live action movie of 2019? Well, I don't know if it's you can consider it failing or not because I don't, I don't know what Jon Favreau's ultimate goals were. Um, I do feel like I missed the expressiveness. That, that, that was... That was my biggest note I had walking away from the li the the new Lion King uh, was I really did miss the expressiveness of the of the characters, um, but other than that, uh, I thought it was a, a you know a, an enjoyable film. Still trying to work the background here. <laughs> Heron, <laughs> how is it like to hang out with Charlie Chaplin? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Manny. Everybody thinks I met Walt Disney. Most of my hang out with Charlie Chaplin. Mama Lamouf 3 on Twitch says, Just want to say thank you for your hard work and dedication. As an active duty mom of three, I don't have the time for money for art school, but I'm eager. I'm an eager student of Arab Malays University. Thank you very much. We like I like hearing that. Martin Burger asked. It was here. a joke. Oh, it was a joke. <laughs> oh, good. Martin Burger asked here. Well, how was it to hang out with Julius Caesar? <laughs> he says, I'm sure I saw you in the background when Brutus killed Caesar. <laughs> Probably did. Dan on YouTube asks, Hey Aaron, what, what was animating on stone tablets like? Was it hard to oh. flip? What was animating on stone tablets like? <laughs> 
Uh, it wasn't too bad, but when I had to call down to editorial and I had to crank that phone and get it up to my ear, it was really tough. <laughs> I thought back then it was like a it was like a treadmill but with the giant <laughs> crank shot. <laughs> All right, let's get into this now. Let's really get into this, shall we? Actually, I thought like the very beginning editorial they just lit they just laid all the stones down on the ground <laughs> in in numerical order. All right, first thing I want to do is I'm going to create this new layer. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to go to multiply, and I'm going to just a, another pass on deeper darks. Another pass on deeper darks. I want to get it, just get in here and hit some of these areas. Hey, Aaron, what's it like painting a T-Rex? <laughs> what was it like riding on a mammoth? <laughs> now that was fun, let me tell you. Let me tell you about the time I got drunk and rode a mammoth. <laughs> Can't believe you wrecked a mammoth. He was in my blind spot. How long will your perspective course be with the additional lectures and uh, on water reflections, etc.? How long will it be? Yeah, like how like how how long is the? Uh, I think the course, course is around five a, five hours altogether. Uh, five hours. Yeah, five hours. Something something like that. Somewhere in there in that range. It's long enough to get the information across. How's that? Again, for those joining us, we'll be selling limited edition signed and numbered <coughs> version of this print. It's going to be available for order on August 10th as part of World Lion Day at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Now I'm still. I haven't hit my bright my bright highlights yet, so it's and I'm still kind of just darkening shadow areas. Hey bud. Hey Achilles. Hey bud. Hey How you doing, bud? bud? Well, Achilles came in to say hi. Erica Bay says I'm starting uh, my World Lion Day piece now. All right, Erica. Do your thing. Erica, do the thing. Donna Jensen Moore says, you are so talented. <laughs> oh, so I'm also sure I saw Aaron scribble on uh, one of the rocks of the stone that hedge uh, writing out, Aaron was here. That's right. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, how much will the prints cost and what size will it be? Gonna be 18 by 24. That's the size I'm creating them. Not sure what they're gonna cost yet. Oh, Speaking probably. of animal conservation, Expedition Art is offering the In Danger book for $40 uh, plus shipping at expeditionart.org. Thanks, Nick, for reminding me of that. Sorry about that, Manny, for forgetting to mention it. But um, I'm part of a group called Expedition Art that's headed up by our friend Manny. Roscow and I uh, it's one of the best best groups of people I've ever been a part of we're, I mean first of all we're just great friends but that's a great cause as well and uh, last year we, we did a book called uh, In Danger 
which is 100 endangered species. And uh, I had the privilege of doing four of the animals in the book. And um, the book is for sale. If you go over uh, for $40, and if you go over to expeditionart.org, so that's expeditionart.org. Um, God, I got skin on my lip, skin on my lips is coming off. <laughs> um, uh, then uh, you can uh, you can order that book, and the proceeds from the book uh, go to uh, environmental conservation. What would you say to convince older artists that Photoshop is worth trying? You know, they're either going to do it or they're not. I've I've talked to so many guys that they just I don't know. I don't know what I'm going. I don't. I don't. I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm so uh, I'm so talked out on that subject because I've talked to a lot of different artists that won't even listen. They won't even hear it. So I just let them go about their day, their day, and uh, and just you know with the knowledge that they will live in the in the past. Artists that that can't embrace I don't understand artists that can't embrace um, new things and. I mean, to me, that's part of the art spirit is, you know, wanting to, wanting to try different ways of expressing. And I don't know, I just like, I can't, I can't understand people that are that closed minded to different things. I think part of it is probably fear. I mean, I had a huge fear of, of digital drawing and painting, uh, before I tried it, so I'm sure a lot of it is, is just that, it's just fear. Aaron, uh, YouTube question, if possible, can you make more live animal drawing videos in the future like one with Proco? Uh, we can try. We're also, right now, I'm in the midst of working out a, uh, a just like we did with the master class, uh, coming up in uh, January and February. I know it's a long ways off, but I'm trying to pull together an entire weekend uh, animal drawing course or seminar uh, and bring people in where I teach for a weekend live. And um, there's a place that I'm talking to right now, we're hoping it works out, where we're going to be able to uh, go in and really have a, a really great time with the animals for an entire weekend. Uh, with d dinner and food and everything provided and and uh and drawing animals and uh so we're talking about doing that in december or january one or the other maybe even february and um it's going to be really great the the facility that we're talking to if it comes through is going to really it's really going to be great all right i'm getting there Getting us something I like. Robert asks, with the highlight shadow, highlight dash shadow layers being set to multiply and overlay, will we always be able to see the underdrawing or will you eventually discard it? What'd you drop? Oh, you dropped your phone? Yeah. Um, well, the way I'm doing it now, you'll always be able to see it, but uh, I eventually get rid of the drawing by, uh, I do another layer on top. This is still all underpainting, because I do another layer on top that's opaque. So let me go to a layer on top so you can see what I'm talking about. Why did you choose uh, cool colors for the background? Uh, to contrast the warm colors of the line and flowers or to be sky and uh, a dark ground behind them? Both. So everything you just said. So I wanted, the, the lion is basically all oranges. And so I wanted to play compliments. And so I chose to go blue. Uh, and I also wanted it to be cool to go into the, to push into the background. Any plans to come to uh, Mexico and Latin America again? Yes. We just don't know when. 
I mean, we for all those people, we get lots of very specific. Hey, any plans to come to Iceland? And yeah, we always want all the places you guys mentioned. Yes, we always want to go. Um, it's just a matter of when we're going to be able to do it. Uh, which Disney live action remake of the of this year is your favorite so far? Of this year? Of this year. Um probably Lion King. I haven't seen uh I haven't seen Aladdin. Me neither. In fact I think the last live action Disney movie I watched was uh, Beauty and the Beast. Which you said you liked or you didn't like? I didn't like it at first. It just felt so different, but then I thought of it as a completely different movie, and then I started liking it. Oh, gotcha. It's one of those where the more times I watched it, the more time, the more I enjoyed it. This is kind of fun just rendering this guy out. Where would the animal drawing weekend take place? Well, I'm not sure yet. It depends on... It's going to be in Florida. That's as specific as I can get right now. How many stars out of five do you have to, or do you want to give to the live action Lion King, review wise? How many stars out of five? I would give it three and a half. Three and a half. Yep, that's why I think I would give it three and a half. Be, is it because it doesn't just have the dynamic range as the original? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's good, and I think it's you know it's an enjoyable film. It's just yeah, for my personal taste, it just um, it lacked in a couple of spots, but I thought it was a good film. Yeah. All right, we're getting there. So I'm just I'm going in over the top of everything and just adding details. Right in here. I lost Nick. Oh no, not Nick. We lost all of our 
questions? Yeah, the new one just popped up, um, or more of a comment. Uh, there's a really good uh, Indian restaurant in Pasadena for your trip to Lightbox it, um, if you like Indian food. Love Indian food. Well, I, I probably know it already because I used to hit all the Indian and Afghan and all the all the those types of restaurants in that area. There's some really good Afghan restaurants in there too. Uh, which line in Lion King do you like the design of uh, best? Uh, Mufasa. Mufasa. Yeah. Uh, will you do a how-to book about traditional painting and drawing? Uh, probably not a book anytime soon, just because uh, I, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that. But um, we are going to have we are going to be doing uh, like an art of Aaron Blaze book soon it's a little great so that'll be coming out hopefully in the next year at least or sooner I'm trying to get a little bit of nice glow in this reflected light in this fur Here comes the rain. Here comes the rain again. There we go. Uh, how do you do your shadings? Do you mess with the opacity or just use a darker color? Uh, I play with both um, blend modes and uh, value. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my drawing layer, which I think is here. I'm just going to knock it back a little bit. So that really tells me where I need to darken my imagery. Pretty lit out yet, still getting rain. Good old summer rain. Summer, sweet summer rain. Sweet summer rain. I'm going to change brushes real quick. Go to a dry brush. I just maybe instantly start to heal, oh brother, where thou. You stole from Mac Ian, <laughs> who was fixing to betray us. You didn't know that at the time, so I borrowed it till I did know. <laughs> <laughs> that don't make no sense. What's your favorite uh, region or biome to uh, draw from? My favorite what? Region or biome <coughs> to draw from? <coughs> Oh, 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 yeah, okay, so Africa. Yeah. Yeah, from definitely Africa. Lizzie <laughs> Shalinsky says, I'm, I'm tired of this rain. I need a boat to get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing some dry brush in here. There. What do you say to people who have a tendency to bash Disney, like saying they only they only in it for the for the money and all that? <laughs> yeah, I'd say of course they're a company. <laughs> Those kind of comments just drive me nuts. It's like, of course they're in it for the money. It's a company. They're a expect? giant company. <laughs> What do co big companies do? They go for the money. <laughs> <laughs> the 
cracks me up when I hear people say that. It's just such a naive point of view. Why did the King Lion and Robin Hood animation not have a mane? Do all male lions have manes? Uh, most do. I don't know why he didn't have a, a mane. That was King Richard, right? Yeah. Mommy! <laughs> Stuck. Keep sucking his thumb. Yeah. Maybe he was a young lion. I don't know. I don't know why he didn't have a mane. Well, he could be sick. Was he Was he sickly? Sick, sicky? Sick. You okay? Sick. Sick? Because doesn't, um... Certain uh, male lions, they, they have a hard time <coughs> growing their fur because they're sick of some, or something. Yeah. Some of them kind, of like, kind of like what they did with uh, Scar in the live act, quote unquote live action. Yeah. Movie. Maybe maybe the King of Robin Hood has a similar thing? Maybe. Uh, in the Art of Aaron Blaze book, will we see more of your concept work for Brother Bear, Lion King, etc.? I'd love to see more rough sketches showing the development process behind the awesome final products. Um, probably not, because those are all, uh, a lot of those are, as far as for reproduction, are copyrighted. Copywritten, copy, copyright, copper, copper, you know what I mean. Yeah. Twitch question, have you considered doing a figure drawing course? I love the anatomy course, but feel like my eye doesn't see the basic shapes in real life. Yes. Um, we've actually been talking about it. I just need to find the right place to, because I want to have models. And uh, I can't very well have, I can't do it in my house. I don't have the room. And uh, so it is something we want to do. And uh, I just got to figure it out. All right, so there's that eye. King Richard, Prince John. Prince John, that was it. That was it. King Richard was the uh, was the one with the big man at the very, very end of the movie. Was it King Richard, or was it? I don't know. I can't uh, remember. I haven't seen that movie in years. And yeah, that was the first remember. Disney movie I saw in the theater. Really? Yep. Came out in nineteen seventy three. The movie did. I went and saw it with my grandfather. He took me. video with polychrome pencils polychrome um i will i've got prismacolor i usually use prismacolor which is close enough Do you I know could, what polychrome is polychrome is just multiple colors oh gotcha chrome is chroma is color poly is many yeah. every time i hear chroma i just think of that shiny metal so it's like polychrome is that like a shiny pencil Yeah. Alright, now I'm going to get in here. Will there ever be The Lion King 2 since Nala and Simba got a cub in the end? I mean, they did do a Lion King didn't 2 they, in the, uh, in the they animated, do, but. Yeah. It all depends, I think. I don't know. I'm not at Disney anymore. Someone made a good 
good point about um, about Prince and uh, and Robin Hood. Lines with a dark and full mane have more levels of testosterone. King Richard was a coward, so I think it makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Also, I want to remind you guys, Dustin, if you can get on the slide thing. I want to remind you guys, um, I've got a new sale, a back-to-school sale happening on my website at CreatureArtTeacher.com. It's 25% off of everything on the site. Everything. So it's a really great deal if you're heading back to school and you're looking for some some lessons or some Photoshop brushes or anything like that. It's 25% uh, off of everything. And then um, uh, if you're a student or a teacher, you can have 50% uh, off of our, our uh, membership uh, fees and streaming, I believe. Or at least that's what it said last week. <clears throat> so check it out. The creature art teacher. So here, you know, I've laid in the main the main masses of the fur, and you know, hit the the light and dark areas. And so now all I got to do really is just hit a few hairs here and there, and it's just enough detail to really carry it. Where's your ice water, man? <laughs> right there. I'm running out. <laughs> Run low on fuel. What's the last movie you worked on before leaving Disney? Uh, I was working on a movie called The King of the Elves. It was a movie I was directing. and um, But I was having some problems with it. And uh, I was taken off the movie. And that's when I left Disney. Uh, when you worked on Disney movies, uh, did you get paid during production only, or did you also get paid when the movie was released? I always got paid. I was a staff. I was on staff, so I got paid every week, just like everybody else. Oh my god, you're not at Disney anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been at Disney since 2010. Well, at least the one memory you'll always have of that place is meeting Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get fan art from fans? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Coming along, I'm liking it so far. Let's turn it around. I think I'll work on it this way for a little while. I always like to reverse it, just look at it from a different angle every once in a while. If did it did 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 me. Yeah, right. Oh, my mind is everywhere today. Um, if Disney asked you to come back to work uh, on a movie, would you? Depends on the movie. Because I really love what I'm doing now. I'd be hard pressed to leave what I'm doing right now. <laughs> like the one movie that would probably that probably catch your attention would be if they got the rights of Tenbo. Yes, I would definitely go back. <laughs> like, even right now, like, if you got a call right, like, right at this second, it's like, 
hey, uh, we want you to work on Tembo, but we need you to pack up, pack your things up, and be here by by tonight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I gotta go. <laughs> It's a it's a nice thought. But anyway. Yeah, the paintings look coming out real nice. Thank you, Derry. He's turned to quite a beauty, Derry. There. Have you seen Rocket Man? I have. I love it. Uh, Gabriel says, hey guys. Hey, Dustin. Hey, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. Marshall got your second letter. He loves it. He's uh, he's trying to figure out how he can get you. He wants to write you, too. He doesn't write very well. So he's he wants to send you something back. So keep your eyes open. Or you can just fly him out there, or vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. You would likely want to go back if they asked you to animate a series called How Aaron Met Walt. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not funny anymore. It's still pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, what was the story uh, for Tembo? What was the story? Yes. It's a story about a young elephant who's taken from the savanna and brought overseas and forced to fight as a battle elephant. It takes place during the time of Hannibal and Alexander. And it's how he kind of loses himself in all of that and has to, has to kind of find himself again and escape the bonds of, of the army that he's a part of and, and make it home again. Back to Africa. Who owns the right uh, the rights to Tembo? It's a uh, it's galloping horse. There's a company in China, a distribution company in China. Snitterflies on YouTube says, Hello, Aaron. I would love for you to say hey to me. Hey, Snitterflies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan of your work, and thanks to you directing Brother Bear, me and my sister bonded when we were children going through tough times. Hey, that means a lot to me. I'm very happy about that. What did you think of the animation in the new uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? I love it. Love it. I really like it a lot, actually. Yeah. I, and not only did I like the animation of it, I liked... The, the way they did the camera work the, the cinematography and also the way they laid everything out yeah just all in all just a fantastic movie highly recommend it would you draw people's animals on the stream like you pick one to draw out of what people send you uh you mean their pets yeah, to me. Um, I might do that someday. That's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, we're just trying to get this nice and worked out here. Let's work on this guy down here, shall we?
working out this paw. Nick says, if and when we want to draw a pet on a live stream, I can open that up to a random selection for our annual streaming members. Hey, that's a great idea. Ooh. So that, I think that's something what we will do. We'll start opening that up to our our annual members, and they'll have the ability to, uh, we'll just do it random from them. Part of the benefit of being a member. The person that asked about the um, drawing pets. Yeah. Um, she says, "Cause I have a golden horse. I would love uh, to see in your style." Awesome. Well, we'll probably do it with members first. If you're a member, then that's awesome. We'll start to open it up to members, and uh, let's see where we go from there. Starting to like how that mane is feeling. So Gabby's asking, I'm a bit late, guys. What was the inspiration uh, for this piece? Oh, it's World Lion Day. So this is uh, a lion that's sick of trophy hunters. So he's putting uh, flowers in their gun barrels. How did you like the new Just Can't Wait to Be King uh, scene in the new movie? Yeah, I thought it was kind of flat. I like, once again, I like the movie. I just felt like it, it just lost some of its dynamics in the translation. Uh, what was the funniest moment we worked at Disney? Oh, I can't. I don't know. I mean, every, every day was was a joy to work there. It was always funny. The guys are always funny. All my coworkers, we're all we we're all always goofing around. Um, everything about that place is awesome. There was. I can't think of any singular funny off the top of my head I mean we, we did a lot of practical jokes to each other um, it was just a it was a wonderful really great place to work you always thought the uh, strategy of running out in the middle of the softball field Announcing everybody. <laughs> oh, that you were you were being born. You were gonna yeah. be yeah. Yep. When, <laughs> when we found out Karen was pregnant for Dustin, I went out in front of the softball field and told everybody they're all playing softball. So got a big cheer from everyone. It was really cool. William asks advice on difficulties transitioning from traditional to digital art. Tips on do's or don'ts. Any advice would be appreciated. You know, the biggest the the biggest benefit for me when I transitioned was uh, stepping up to a uh, using a Cintiq. Uh, and I know not everyone's able to do that, but that really was the that was the big thing that really helped me a lot. It's amazing the texture you get with the main uh, by just layering those colors. Mine tend to look like mud. Any uh, tricks for that? Yeah, well, I make sure that I'm staying in the cool and warm colors. And I'm being very careful to keep my values under control, my lights and darks. I want to make sure that my lights and darks stay completely under control. And you don't have... <coughs> 
you don't have to um you don't have to hit every hair You're just hitting a few hairs here and there just to give it the texture it needs with a little brighter color here and there just to give it the texture Mark on YouTube asked, Dustin, did you ever get your logo finished? My logo finished. Oh, my, um, yeah. Yeah, I got, I got my logo all set. It's on my, on my Instagram, although I might update it in the future a little, a little further, but for now, I have it, uh, where I feel comfortable with it for now, so. But that's a good. That's a good. Hi, Aaron. What will be the core agenda point uh, when you guys are in Kenya uh, drawing from the safari car? Um, I'm probably going to photograph more than anything else because when I get to Africa, I mean, I, I love to draw, but, you know, it might take me 20 minutes to, to do a drawing and in 20 minutes I can shoot a thousand photos. So um, a lot of times what I'm doing is when I'm in the, when I'm in the Land Rover, I am photographing as much as I can. I'll sketch a little bit, but uh, I'm really photographing as much as I can because then after that, I go back. Um, we go back, and when I'm at my tent at night, then I sit down and I'll pull up some of the, the photographs that I shot or even something from memory, and I'll do drawings that way. So a lot of the times I'm on safari, I'm actually drawing in my tent that night. Would you do a stream where you have your eyes covered and you draw? What's that? Say that again? Would you do a stream where you have your eyes covered while you draw? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've done blind contour drawing before and it's not fun. <laughs> uh, Rebecca. Uh, oh, Nick says, I am really digging this image. Thanks, Nick. Um, Rebecca asked, do you like the Broadway version of The Lion King? I love it. In fact, when I went to see it, I cried. It was really, it was really the first time that I'd seen any of my, any of the stuff that I had animated, reimagined up on a stage, and so, you know, some of the things that I had actually animated, so the scenes, the shots, or that are in the Broadway play, um, it really moved me. And uh, yeah, I loved it. go. Kevin asks, do you ever work out your values in black and white first or do you go straight to color always? No, sometimes I do work out my values first. Um, this is a case here. And this one, uh, let me turn, let me turn this off. If I turn that off, it's going to be sideways, but here's one where I, I did a rough drawing of the values, trying to work out the values there. I don't I don't get really detailed with it um, but uh, I do I do try to do my values sometimes first only sometimes which Disney location did you work at don't they have uh, studios in several locations around the US no they have studios or at least the, for feature animation at the time we had studios we had a studio in uh, Orlando at the MGM Studios, Hollywood Studios, uh, now I guess it is. Um, and then for a while we had a studio in Paris, uh, but that went away. Uh, that studio, uh, when we started downsizing, or when the studio, when they started downsizing, I hate to use, I shouldn't be saying we, because I had nothing to do with that. Um, when they started downsizing, the Paris studio was one of the first studios to go. Unfortunately, there were some really great, really great animators that were in there, part of that. When you say tent, uh, do you camp out during your stay in Africa? Well, they're permanent tents. They're tents that are put on slabs. 
So we are staying in tents as far as, you know, we have canvas walls, but a lot of, I'm not sure how this, how this camp works, but a lot of the other camps I've been to, they actually have running water inside the tent, you know, things like that. So it's not, it's not the roughest of, t of camping. It's not bad at all. What's your opinion on Nala and the new live action Lion King? Um, you know, same the same note that I had on everything else. I thought, you know, I thought she looked like a really nice, cute, real lion. Uh, how many hours a day do you draw? Um, usually, if I'm drawing, I'll do about eight or nine hours a day, but I don't draw every day. I try to draw. I'm I'm, I'm probably drawing five days a week. Wouldn't you say? Just about. You know, five days in, five days a week, uh, twenty four hours a day. Yeah. Eight days a week. Eight days a week. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. I got a win in the rain. All right. Let's see here. I'm gonna. I want to do something. My usual. I'm going to add a little gradient, set it to multiply. If you could build your house at any place in the world, where would that be? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, what last one did we need? That feels better. Um, if I could build my house anywhere in the world, where would it be? Uh, well... That's a toughie, isn't it? I love Florida. Probably be on one of the beaches here in Florida. Uh, I was living on the beach down in Stewart not too long ago. I really loved living on the beach in Stewart. I love Stewart. The town of Stewart. So I'd probably go back to Stewart and build there. Um, or the Keys. Probably the Keys. Do you enjoy drawing humans just as much as animals? No. I don't mind drawing humans, but I don't enjoy them as much as animals. I really enjoy drawing animals a lot. I like them a lot. Um, these tents you were talking about before, are they like the tents in MASH? Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, there's something like that. A little different, but basically kind of the same. That's a good analogy. Good comparison, I should say. Hey, Nick asks, can you zoom and pan around the eyes, etc.? Yes, I will. Just Sorry, Nick. Uh, YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, have you been to Simba Campsite next to Ngorogoro? No, I, um, the only place in Tanzania that I went to was uh, uh, Tarangiri National Park. Other than that, I haven't been to any place in Tanzania. I've only been to the Maasai Mara um, and Samburu National Parks in Kenya. Also, Lewa Downs, which is a private reserve private rhino reserve uh, near Mount Kenya. There. So here we go, a little bigger.
Nick says, if you want to be the first to know when this print is available, please join our mailing list at CreatureArtTeacher.com. There's a sign-up form right on our homepage. Yeah, so if you want to be among the first to get this, go to our, our uh, website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, and right on the homepage there's a place to sign up for our mailing list. And you'll also get my, the, uh, my sketching brush that I always use. So there's a plus in that as well. What would be an advice uh, you can give to get the best on a safari trip? Um, wow. Well, you don't have to go super luxury. You know, some people want to go a little bit more luxury, and, and you don't have to, to to really enjoy, you know, to make it a really cool experience. Um, and I would, I would, as far as Kenya goes, I mean, I really think... The Maasai Mara is one of the greatest places you can go to in Africa, and so I would I would recommend the Maasai Mara. Um, I don't know I haven't explored uh, too many options in in uh, Tanzania as far as the Serengeti and all that, so I'm not sure there. But the Maasai Mara is awesome. Yeah, we're slowly getting there. Hey, Dustin? Yes, we are. It's looking good. I like the fur textures in that. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. What's your favorite song, Dustin? Oh, ooh. I have a list. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't even imagine a favorite. You saying what a favorite song is? Is you you like so many different songs? Yeah, they, they range. It's like how you are with people. You just, you like everybody. <laughs> well, there are there are a few song, a few types of music that are hard to, uh, hard to listen to. It, kind of like how there are very, very few people that I can't, can't tolerate. Yeah. But they're, they're long gone. Like, I don't even talk to them anymore, so. But, um... I would say Feeling Good by Michael Buble. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I sing that, that every time I go to karaoke. I sing that every time. So. And are you feeling good right now? I am feeling good. Can you quickly explain to us the anatomy of voice recognition technology? In a lift. In a lift in <laughs> Scotland. Never gets old. Don't forget the whiskers, Aaron. Oh, so those, are, those are always the finishing touch. Those are always the finishing touch. See, I got the wrong yellow in there. See that really kind of acidic yellow on the edges? Got the wrong yellow there. I want to try to get rid of it. What's your favorite Disney song? I don't know. I never liked any of Disney songs. <laughs> I had that question the other day. I was talking about Zippity Doo Dah. Yeah. I mean, that's. <laughs> I'll, I'll just. I'll tolerate. I just. I don't like Disney music. I'm sorry. I know I should. I just don't. Honestly, my my favorite, like I like I said in that in that stream, was uh, the Transformation song. Oh yeah. I just love the power behind it. And also the whole sequence is just... Yeah. <laughs> it says, Bare Necessities? That's a good one. Uh, Nick says, Some people are commenting that the audio is a tad quiet. Maybe bring the mic a little closer. 
Hey, is this a little better? You think it's a little better? I got the mic. I got the mic right up to my mouth. Uh, for those of you that are listening with headphones, uh, this is for you. Now people are like, well, that hurt. Ah, Rip my ears! (laughs) My ears hot. It's hot. I think the red tape they ran. I'm such a mouth breather today. (laughs) You so. Lindsay Roy, you sound like one of those late night <laughs> dedication radio hosts. <laughs> Coming to you live from California. <sighs> sound like Jim Jackson. Jim Jackson used to stand behind me and mouth breathe. Have you ever drawn an orca whale? Yes, I have drawn an orca whale. <clears throat> Do you remember names or faces best? Faces. I'll forget. I'll forget your name three seconds after you're introduced to me. Same. I've gotten better about. It. I tend to uh, repeat people's names as I meet them, so I can. Uh, so it burns its way into my brain a little better. I do the same thing. But even then, I, I mess it up. Do you still have sketches from the movie Pocahontas? No, I don't. Do you have any tattoos? I do. Yeah, I've got one tattoo on my upper arm right here. Can you see it? Or can you switch the camera? Yeah, right there. Why don't you stand up? I can't tell if you can see. It's right there. That's a tattoo of... uh, of Karen. After she died, I had a tattoo after she passed away. Um, Dustin and I in Austin, I designed the tattoo and then we went to uh, Zulu Tattoo, who's out of Austin, Texas now, but at the time he was out of, uh, um, he was in Hollywood. And um, I went down there and uh, I brought some of Karen's ashes and he mixed some of Karen's ashes with the ink. And so she's inside, she's inside. So that was a very special day. And Austin and I got our uh, tattoos done like immediately or like a while before you got yours. And uh, both ours were dragonflies. I got mine on my back shoulder blade and uh, Austin got one, got hers on her uh, uh, arm. Yes, because mom liked dragonflies so much, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. All right. Almost there. Yep. If you were to do a monochromatic sketch. Monochromatic. Huh? Monochromatic. Monochromatic. What did I say? Monochromatic. Mo- monochromatic. Uh, what color would you choose? What color 
Would you choose? Uh, make your choice. Make it a good one, sir. <laughs> um, red. Red. Brown. Brown. Nice. I think I would go with green. What does painting with all the colors of the wind mean? <laughs> well, you see, it's like this. It's like this. It's painting with all the colors that you can see, that you can't see, but you can feel. That's what painting with the colors of the wind means. When you're out in nature, you can feel the spirit. When you're out, you know, you can feel Mother Nature. And when you can do that, then that allows you to paint with all the colors of the wind. I mean, you can paint with the color that you can't see, but you can feel. So I think it's a very nice sentiment. Did you see Moana? What are your thoughts about it? I love Moana. Yes, I did see it. I love it. They did an amazing job with the water. Oh, they really did. I'm a big fan of uh, Ron Clements and John Musker, though, too. They're my favorite directors I ever worked for. Were they the ones that directed Moana? They directed Moana. They directed Aladdin. They directed The Little Mermaid. They directed uh, uh, Great Mouse Detective. They directed Frog Prince. <laughs> really? <laughs> the Frog Princess. Yeah. Wow. They're the most prolific directors of Disney of all time. At Disney of all time. Oh, Hercules. Did I say Hercules? You did not say Hercules. Yeah, they directed Hercules. Wow. Did I lose Nick? Oh, what am I getting? What have you done? What did Nick send? Oh, my ears. That, uh, oh, all the... When you, when you did the ASMR thing to the microphone. I was at full volume, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> he basically blew out people's eardrums. Aaron, oh God, my ears. Ouch. Oh Jesus. Oh my ears. Oh dear goodness, that scared me. Sorry guys. Just want, <laughs> Sorry. To, make sure you, just want to make sure you're awake. Sorry about that. Have you ever read the French translation of Colors of the Wind? They had to add more to the lyrics so it could fit in the, in the music. It feels a lot more poetic than the English version, in my opinion. No, I didn't read it. I have never... No, I don't... Yeah, no, 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 no I haven't, no. Yeah, no, yep, yeah, no, maybe, <laughs> yes, no, what, huh? What's going on? Aaron, uh, would you happen what? to know where the overscroll feature is located on Photoshop CS6? The overscroll? Overscroll. I don't know what that is. Tell me about the overscroll. Overscroll sounds like a um, like a fantasy device or something. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I know what overscroll means. Tell me about this. YouTube oh, question. Oh. When are your live when are you are your lives, Aaron? I only keep Oh, when are your live streams? I only keep catching <laughs> the end. Well, um, when are your oh, lives? they also did Treasure Planet. We forgot Treasure Planet. Oh yeah, that's okay. Oh, uh, my live streams are every Tuesday and Thursday at one PM Eastern time. So that's one PM my time. I live in the eastern United States. So whatever that works out for you, whatever country you're in, um, that's 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 when we do it. When are your lives? What li lives? When are your where, <laughs> where? When are your lives? <laughs> I was struggling there for a second. Yeah, half half the questions that I get look like 
that, and that's why it takes me an extra minute to look at <laughs> all to over. translate. Just to translate. Well, some of our followers, English is not their first language. No, it's not, and I and I do respect that. Their English is better than whatever other language <laughs> than my version of their language, because I am Most a definitely. mono language guy. Same here. I only know like the very very basic basics of like hi, goodbye, thank you, in numbers one through five. <laughs> The most complicated phrase I know <laughs> is not even complicated at all, and it's I do not under I do not understand. Je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas, monsieur. When you're going into the detailed colors of the fur, how often are you switching the colors? Oh, quite a bit. I change quite a bit. Have you met Elton John since he did a song for The Lion King? Yes, I had dinner with Elton John back in 2006. Um, I had dinner with Elton John in, 2000, in uh, Vegas in 2006. This is when I was directing, at the time I was directing Romeo and Juliet. Um, I only directed, I directed it for about seven months and then uh, I I left it to go to another project. Um, and uh, but while I was while I was working on it, um, I was working a lot with Elton's husband, David Furnish, and so we got to a point where he wanted he felt it was time for us to get together with Elton, and so that's when uh, we went to Vegas and. That's a long story, but it was a it was a heck of a night. We had fun. It was a very beautiful evening. How long would the back to school sale be available? I think it's uh, I think it's through the weekend. Is that right? Or no? It might be longer than that. Hey Nick, when does the back to school sale end? I thought it ended yesterday. Oh no, it goes right through the weekend. I was kidding. Oh. <laughs> YouTube question, the painting is looking wonderful. If I may ask, if I recall correctly, whilst working on Brother Bear, the animator cast to cat the animator cast got to meet Terrell Whitlatch. How is it working with her? Well, I hired Terrell for the for uh, Brother Bear. And she was there for everybody. She was there developing you know, she would uh, put together packets on how to draw bears and all kinds of stuff. And Terrell is Terrell's a dream. Carol is one of my favorite people in the world, and uh, she's absolutely wonderful human being. Oh, the person I was asking about the overscrolling. Uh, overscrolling is when you can pan or scroll past the edge of an image. I see him doing it often. Oh, I just well for me the the you have to press F so that you you have a floating document. And then uh, I hit my space bar. My space bar, if that's, what, if, if that's what you're talking about, that right there. I'm using my space bar for that. Lindsay says, uh, Ellen John was just here uh, at the Hertz Arena in Fort Myers. Ah. That's awesome. Yeah, one of the coolest experiences because we went and saw, we went and had dinner with him up in his, up in his uh, hotel room, and Karen was very sick at the time and uh, she didn't have any hair, and uh, she was going through a lot of chemo. Just about, just about six months before she actually, uh, before we lost her, and uh, so this is her last one of her last big trips, and we went up to Elton's. Uh, hotel room and we walked in and Elton saw Karen and um, obviously knew could see that she was sick he'd never met her before but he waited everybody he waited for everybody to sit down and then when Karen sat he sat right across from her so that he could talk to her talk to her for the evening it was very very it was a very nice gesture on his part 
and it really made her night. Did your wife Karen draw also? And by the way, uh, Martin is uh, spelled with a K, not a C. Yeah, she did draw. We met in art school. I can't imagine being with somebody who doesn't understand art. That's why Vedanta, I love being with Vedanta because Vedanta really gets it. Not only understand art, understand artists. <laughs> That's the other part. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, do directors usually have the power to hire artists onto a project? Yes. Yes, we do. Have you ever met Jane Goodall? No, I would love to meet Jane Goodall. I think that would good be good all around. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> Yeah. What are your tips on doing gradient sections of drawings? Is there a blend tool on Photoshop you use? Um, I use a gradient tool when I need to use it, but other than that, I'm not, yeah, I just, um, like at the bottom here of this image, you can see, you know, it kind of gets darker. I use the gradient tool to do that. So right now I'm just kind of noodling at this thing. I feel like we're getting pretty close. I think I'm going to go a little bit brighter behind, or maybe darker. I wonder if it should go darker. Hi Aaron, I wrote this question earlier, but your lion looks realistic, but at the same time with facial expressions. What's the secret to combining the two together? You know what? It's I. I it's really understanding the anatomy and understanding uh, expression. So if you understand that anatomy and you understand expression, you can start to get the two to work together. And um, yeah, it's, it's something I've done for so long, I don't really think about it anymore. Have you had yourself an ice cream today? <laughs> No, I haven't uh, had myself an ice cream today. <laughs> Sarah asks, how would you go about rendering very fluffy white fur? I find it hard to show the landmarks of my Samoyed dog because she's all fur. Is it about the shadows? It's absolutely about the shadows, yes. You've got to get in there and get those shadows. Yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm because I brightened up the flower, and I've got some nice bright white fur on the lion, I've decided to darken the background to get those elements to pop, because that's where I want my center of interest. It's right in those areas. Yeah, that feels better to me. Nick says, August 15th for our student teacher discount, the 25% off uh, for others ends on Monday. So as far as our sale goes, uh, the 25% off ends on Monday and then August 15th for the student teacher discount. I'm going to go just a little bit more blue. I'm going to go not be afraid of color. I'm not afraid of color. You afraid of color? No, I'm not afraid of color. I'm not afraid of color. I'm going to get some color in here. I'm not I ain't afraid of no ghost. I'm not afraid. Bro, oh. bro. still want some of it to come through in the texture that I'm creating. Do you know the artist Therese Larson? I do. I don't know her personally, but I know her work. I think she's brilliant. She did the book for the, the Lion King. She's the one that ended up doing the book. 
There's a person that asked me earlier if I had done the Lion King book, and um, she's the one that replaced me. I love her work. Uh, YouTube question. I've never seen the Lion King movies. Are they any good? Because I'm interested in them. I'm not even going to answer that. <laughs> Twitch question. Uh, have you ever seen, uh, ever been to Sanibel Island and the Nature Preserve there? Yes, I have. Many times, actually. I, um, I'm from Naples, so I grew up in that area, and uh, I love it there. So I'm going to try one thing. I'm going to put a layer on top. I'm going to go with green, actually. Oh, maybe Did you ever get the chance to meet Steve Irwin? He was a big inspiration for me growing up. No, I didn't. I, I really wanted to meet him. I never got to meet him, though. Would love to meet his son. Yeah. Well, his son's really into photography now. Oh, yeah. I've seen some of his pictures. <laughs> I'm jealous. Oh, I bet. So I'm just going to add some grasses coming up. I'm going to throw, let's see. Make them a little brighter. And Lindsay from the um, uh, from the master class this weekend, she has this on her wall of Jane Goodall. And it's signed too. Oh wow. That's beautiful. doing wanted to throw some grass in here just to add a little bit of a extra element. David on YouTube says the gun barrels look a little bent like rubber. Yeah I know that's my crappy freehand. I'll I'll go in and, and uh, I'll probably readjust them. I'll show you what I can do using my line tool. I'll fix them that way. At Disney being an animator, do you get to choose what projects or movies you work on, or do they just get assigned to you? You get assigned. You get assigned, buddy. Buddy. Hi guys, I used to think that drawing from TV was cheating until I found out that Mark Davis, the animator, used to draw from TV also. So it's not cheating? What does it matter if it was cheating? I, I, this is the thing that drives me nuts. What is cheating in drawing? If you're learning something, how is it cheating? If you're able to achieve the image that you're trying to create, what what is cheating? What is that? I don't understand. What's this cheating thing? Yeah, I don't like that one there. Gonna get rid of that one. There. So now on these gun barrels, let's let's take these gun barrels and oh I gotta do one more thing here. I'm gonna go on the sky. I'm gonna do a layer over the top of it. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this color. I'm going to go a little brighter with it. I'm going to grab my cloud brush that I have that I like so much. This guy right here. Have you heard of the American Art School in Italy that focuses on classical art? Both paint, painting and drawing and sculpting. I have. I'd love to see it. I don't know. If, sorry, I'm, I'm experimenting right now. I don't know if I like that. Let me go with a different color. Do you think rotoscope animation is cheating? It depends on what you're looking for. 
It all it all has to do with the what the desired end result is. Too much color, not the right color. Oh shoot. I wasn't on another layer, I gotta get on another layer. So you're gonna do one more thing? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing one more thing. Do one more thing. Dustin, since you've caught the photography bug, how many lenses and filters uh, have you acquired? And are you already dreaming of a camera upgrade and faster shutter speeds? Um, I've, my, my current lenses are the cheapo lenses that came with my T6, which is a like 90 buck, uh, 75 to 300 millimeter, and just as cheap of a 18 to 55. But I have a, uh, nifty 50 um 50 millimeter f 1.8 um and i do already have dreams and uh of getting a new camera plan getting the a7 III with with a whole line of g master lenses including the 200 to 600 for wildlife photography so so, yeah, so that's what i got now and that's my future goals from uh and i'm hoping to get that stuff by the end of the year that's my goal so and I'm actually saving money. <laughs> yeah. Not sure I'm liking that. What is it you're trying to do? I'm just trying to break up that background a little bit, but I don't like it. Wow. I had that kind of... No, I don't like it at all. I'm just trying to give it a little a little twish. A little swish. A little swish. A little we're gonna fix those gun barrels real quick. So all we're gonna do is go to my line tool and set that to let's say nine pixels, and I'm gonna rotate this around, blow this up, and I'm gonna go grab this color right here, and I'm gonna grab my line tool, and I'm gonna. Pull it from here to here. Whoops, that did nothing. I'm on the wrong layer. Dog on it. What are you uh, doing? <laughs> All right, let's try this again. So I'm going to grab that color. I'm going to make this probably 18 pixels, and I'm going to grab it here. There we go. Make it nice and straight. There we go. Now it's straight. Let's try it one more time. Come here. Boom, straight. Boom. Um, I'm going to grab this one, hit OK, pull from there, and boom, straight. All right, that feels good. There we go. Same thing here. Grab this color here. Grab my line tool, pull it straight back, and I've got a nice straight line. This guy here. Oh, that one didn't quite make it. I'm going to try pulling it from here. Uh, let's do this. There we go, fill that in, that feels good. Go over here. There we go. And same thing on this side. Straight through and erase from here. There. painting and you realize you have done a little bit on the wrong layer. 
Is there any way to fix it besides starting uh, over on that section? No, I don't know. Uh, unless you can do Apple Z, go backwards. But yeah, it's you're kind of stuck at that point. Uh, YouTube question, how do you go about painting a translucent object? Uh, Nick says that might be a good topic for a live stream. That actually is a good topic for a live stream. What topic? It's, it, uh, tape, painting a translucent object. It really comes down to lighting, light, and what, how much light you can see through an object and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to finish this up. i got to finish this. I'm getting bored. <laughs> so um, I'm going to hit this. I want to go a little bit grayer, maybe. I'm going to use my gradient tool. Just, it, oh, just go down a little bit there, and then I'm going to go warm. It says, just got here. Recap on the piece. Here, let me do that. There we go. That feels a little better. And what if we do a little bit on top? Um, I'm doing my World Lion Day uh, image. And so this is an anti-poaching image that I'm creating. Oh, that's a little too much. Z, let me knock that back. Gives it a little bit of depth. I wonder if I should put that on overlay. What does that do? It gives it a little something. There we go. There is our Lion World Lion Day image from Aaron Blaze. I think uh, I've got a couple little things I want to hit. Just little highlights, I think. Just a few little moments. Oh, actually, no, it's not. I want to do this. I'm going to grab all of these, put them in a folder, and then I'm going to where, merge that group. You're going to uh, do the thing? I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to go to my... First thing I want to do is just soften a little bit of these edges like I always do. Uh, Deanna on YouTube says, going to buy the premium membership right now. I had it a year ago. Didn't have time to watch everything. You're a great inspiration. Well, thank you for supporting us. YouTube question. If you could meet one other professional artist, who would it be? Um, man, there's a lot of them out there. There's a contemporary painter right now. I love his work. His name is Jeremy Lipking. He's one of he's one of my favorite painters. I would love to meet him. So I'm trying to get a little bit of fur feeling in this. I'm losing some of these edges. Soften that beard. Maybe a little bit of the nose. I like soft edges. YouTube question. If I learn how to draw a wolf, would the anatomy knowledge transfer to other canines? It absolutely would, yes. Uh, for the latecomer, what made you want to make his mane so dark? Because uh, I wanted him to feel like a mature lion. So I went with the with a black maned lion. Plus he thought he'd be regal and cool. How about a flower or two within the grass so it shows where he is getting the flowers from? Well, that's a cool idea. That's an interesting idea. I'll do that later actually. That's a good idea. Do the thing. Do the thing. Nick uh, says, "Can you zoom in and show the layers?" Yes. Let me let me work this out just a little bit here when I'm still softening some of these areas. I don't need all of this detail. 
You seem to enjoy drawing lions more rather than lionesses. Uh, no, I draw lionesses just as much, actually. And, and if it seems that way, then no, I don't. I don't. I like lions in general. Did you soften the edges on a normal or overlay level? Right now, it's all it's all laid out to one layer. What is do the thing a reference to? It's um, it's from an animated series, um, from the from Avatar: The Legend of Korra. And uh, there's a particular character that um, has an assistant. He's kind of like, like one of those rich lawyer kind of kind of guys. And he always uh, talks to his assistant, going, "Julie, do the thing." <laughs> and his and so he's known for, as the guy who says, "Do the thing." And uh, one day we were doing a live stream, and it just kind of popped out of my mouth when um, we were asking Nick to help us out with something. I just I just said out loud, "Nick, do the thing." It just kind of stuck. So, that's the whole story behind the dinner thing. Okay, so, there we go. Well, let me soften this edge too. Give it a nice little fur feel. You know what I'm using right now? I'm using one of my one of my grass brushes, my foliage brushes, but I'm using it with my, on my smudge tool. And it gives this really cool feeling of fur, but it's meant for grass. There we go. What made you start doing streams? Uh, I just wanted to get out there more. I wanted to give out more content. Um, I wanted to build my audience, and uh, that was one of the ways that I thought would be a fun way to do it. And I'd asked a lot of people have been asking me about me doing streams, so I just went ahead and decided to do it. questions what's that we're out of questions that's okay I'm out of time you ran out of ammo sir yeah so I'm out of time so there's our image let me zero that in tab that away so there's our image our little lion who who doesn't want to be shot at anymore so he's putting flowers in the gun barrels make peace no more Trophy hunting. He's in love, man. Uh, just got a new question pop up. Um, do you think Photoshop is a good investment, or would you recommend a different software for starters wanting to get better? A good investment? Photoshop is only like ten bucks a month. Yes, it's a good investment. It's very, it's a very good investment. You should have Photoshop without a doubt if you want to be a digital artist. Facebook question. Did you soften the edges on a normal or overlay level? This is all combined down to one layer. So I'm softening the edges on a, a combined layer. layer. All right. There it is. You notice I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna give him the soft edges. I'm gonna keep the gun barrels hard. He's soft. He's warm. Gun barrels are hard and cold. Just like so. And then let me do this. Go down here. I'm gonna put a new layer on top. I'm gonna to set that to multiply. We're just gonna do this. I don't 
don't think that's too dark. Maybe maybe a little bit. Knock it back a little bit. Let me go to this color, maybe a little brighter. And we're going to go to our type. Now, I'm not sure what kind of type to use. We've got a whole bunch to choose from. Um, I'm just going to grab one. What is this one? Set that right in the middle. How long did this uh, painting take to this point? It just point? took uh, two and a half hours. Three hours. Three hours. Three good solid hours. You deserve an ice cream after this. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Well, so I was just offering you ice cream. <laughs> the heck is going on here? We're just, we're offering you ice cream, man. Yeah, I don't think I like that one either, but I'm going to, I'm going to find one that I like. I'm going to do it at a size that I like as well. And if you can't, if you can't find one in your Photoshop, you can probably find one on uh, Google. Yeah. Oops. I don't know if it's my internet connection or yours, but the stream is getting very choppy and hard to follow. Um, everything is looking fine over here, Craig. You might just need to uh, refresh your page. All right, so there's our World Lion Day 2019. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. I wanted to do something that was a little more... Uh, uh, had something to say. Anyway, I had uh, something for this editorial. I want to do an editorial. Edit there we go. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, we've got our sale going on, our back to school sale, twenty five percent off everything on the site through uh, this weekend, and then all the way up to April or uh, August fifteenth, we've got uh, fifty percent off of our, our our membership for students and uh, uh, teachers. And then also, um, uh, don't forget, I've got my Photoshop brushes, brand new set that have just come out, uh, texture set, and um, uh, what am I missing? Uh, oh, Patreon. Um, I just started a Patreon page. I would really love it if you guys could show me a little bit of love. Come on over and check out the site. It's uh, patreon.com slash Aaron Blaze Art. And... Um, you know, even a little bit helps us because it really enables us to create more content, spend more time creating content, and getting uh, getting the stuff that you guys have been asking for, well, getting that all out to you. So, um, if you want to check that out, go to patreon.com uh, slash Aaron Blaze Art. And uh, I swear I'm missing something. Am I missing one? Uh, you got the brushes, you got the Patreon, you got the, get the sale. Sale, uh, perspective. Oh, perspective. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome. So my perspective course, which is in uh, pre-sales right now, um, we've just finished doing all the shoot for it, the shoots, the shoots, shooting the videos. Shoots. Um, and it's uh, uh, over five hours of videos on linear perspective. Go to creatureartteacher.com and get it now while you can at 40% off. And the, uh, the actual course will be available on August 16th. I believe it is. Yes. So, uh, that is the goal. once again, thank you guys so much for today. Don't worry, I'm going to be changing the font. I don't like that font. I don't like the color either. But anyway, this is my World Lion Day poster. And if you guys are interested, check it out this week and come to our website. And uh, you'll be able to purchase it there on August 10th. And uh, our proceeds go to helping lions around the world. So, it's a good cause. It's something we look forward to doing every year. And uh, this was a fun, I had a good time creating this image. So thanks again for your time. Thanks again for always supporting us. I really enjoy it. And uh, go out, put some beauty back in the world. Put your shopping cart away and take it away, Dustin. Thank you guys so much for watching. Awesome as always. 
And I'll see you guys on um, Tuesday. And, Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. As Bonne. my father likes to say. And, and Tuesday. Tuesday. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching as always. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. Hope you guys enjoy future streams as well. And until next time, Cowboy Bebop. See you guys.